Let's head to Canberra now. Joining us is the Shadow Climate Change and Energy Minister Ted O'Brien. Uh, a bit going on in that space this morning. Ted, good to see you. Energy prices to spike by 20% for roughly 600,000 homes from July 1. That's going to hurt and a bad sign for the start of winter. Good morning, Peter, and you're dead right. Um, another day, another warning that your power bills are going up. And they're going up under the same government that promised the Australian people a reduction in household power bills by $275. In some parts of Australia, power bills have gone up by, on average by over $700. Over $700. They haven't been going down by $275. Now Australians are being told that, yep, they're probably going to cop another 20% on top. There's going to be no end to this. Um, Labor is taking us down the wrong path with their energy policies and Australians are paying. I had a, a business on the program yesterday, fruit and veg business, uh, who told us, Ted, that uh, his electricity bills at the moment are more expensive than his rent. Uh, and it's very, very difficult to afford. Do you, uh, and, and given the fact that we've got now got another price rise that's coming for a lot of folks from July 1, I mean, does this lead to, to more closures than perhaps you originally feared? Peter, oh, they're just copying it, honestly. Businesses have been on their knees now for months on end, and I am worried they're going to close. And, and a lot of these are small businesses. They're family-owned businesses. You know, yeah, and it might be a fruit and veg shop. It might be your local IGA. Um, power costs are going through the roof and they can't always pass it on because if they pass it on, then it's the Australian household that cops it. So each way you look at it, it's either businesses or it's households. Um, it's only going to get worse. And unfortunately, the government's policies are just making it worse. There's nothing that they are doing that is going to have any real structural shift to get power prices down. Um, this is the problem. OK, so, so they, they, they will pivot to the caps, um, but that's more a medium to long-term fix. What can be done in the short term? Well, more than anything, we need to make sure that the government turns a different direction. So, yeah, they talk about caps, right? And that's all part of a, a broader policy which is suffocating the supply of gas in the market. Now, the one thing we learnt from last winter was you need gas in the market. That's the only thing that will firm up supply. Um, but they are suffocating that. They are not allowing gas in. They've taken gas out of the capacity mechanism, right. for crying out loud. But, but Tanya Plibersek like, has approved that for, for Santos, though. I mean, and it is open to, to new gas, new coal. Does that assuage your concerns? No, it doesn't at all. Um, yeah, sure, tick for that. I mean, it, it would have been absolutely ridiculous if that wasn't approved. Um, but every step they're taking, they're demonising gas. They're, they're playing this whole political game trying to put one technology up against each other. Um, we need to take an approach as a country that we need all the above. We need everything we can get our hands on to keep prices down and to keep it reliable. Um, but the Labor Party has a very different view. They want to pick exactly which technologies should work, what companies should um, supply which companies. They're trying to run the entire economy, and these are a bunch of people, um, the Prime Minister, the Treasurer, the, the Energy Minister, not one of them have had one day of work in their life outside of politics, and they're trying to put themselves at the centre right. of the entire economy. No wonder Is, Australians are copping it. Are they really demonising gas, though? I mean, when we talk to those improvements that Tanya Plibersek has signalled, and then Anthony Albanese has signalled this week that he wants more gas... Uh, you know, to, to fill shortfalls moving forward. Is that demonising gas? Oh, look, uh, if people still believe what comes out of Anthony Albanese's mouth, I'm sorry, um, they shouldn't. Um, this bloke promised everything, didn't he? Weren't mortgages coming down? They're going up. Um, weren't prices coming down? They're going up. Weren't your power bills going to come down? They're going up. So when Albanese says he's really, you know, really interested in gas, well, look at the actual policies they are introducing. They put a, 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 a rule in place that will dictate to gas suppliers who they can sell to. They have taken gas out of the capacity mechanism, which is basically sending a huge signal to gas producers that we don't want them. They took $100 million out of their own budget for gas exploration. 
um, and drilling. I mean, they have done everything materially of yeah. substance to kill gas. Just because the Prime Minister yaps on and makes more promises, I think the Australian people are wising up. He breaks promises and they pay. Big business has urged you to back the government's safeguard mechanism warning. A lack of bipartisan support could jeopardise or even derail enormous private investment needed for clean energy transition. Are you at all for swaying or turning? Well, it's bad policy, Peter, so I don't think uh, there's any move at all. Uh, the BCA you know, thinks it's um, good policy. Well, look, I understand why businesses are getting nervous because, again, Anthony Albanese promised he wouldn't ever do deals with the Greens and he's going to... Looks like they're going to do another dirty deal with the Greens. So I understand why governments would... Why business is saying, gee, the last thing we need is yet another Labor-Greens deal. But this, this is a carbon tax. And so one of two things is going to happen. You add a tax right now, businesses will close or they're going to pass the cost on to consumers. Um, this is what the, the safeguard mechanism is all about, right? So if you're laying a concrete slab at home, the prices are going to go up. Um, if you're doing some brickwork at home, prices are going to go up because the price of cement will go up because of a new tax. If you've got a car, prices are going to go up because the price of oil is going to be going up because of the new tax. If, if you buy a loaf of bread uh, at the supermarket, those prices are going to go up because the price of urea, fertiliser, is going to go up because of the government's new tax. This is a hidden tax that, that will be uh, hitting the Australian people um, and the government's wondering why the coalition doesn't want to support a new tax in the midst of cost of living crisis. There you have it. Why? Australians should not pay for the incompetence of a Labor government, Pete. Tata Brian, uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you, though. We'll talk to you again soon. For